this is what I suppose all physicists agree on. There are four fundamental forces in the universe, which include the electromagnetic force, gravitational force, the strong and the weak nuclear force. All other forces such as friction, tension and so on are a result of these fundamental forces. Today, I would like to show you how all these forces can be reduced to a single fundamental force. That is, I would like to show you that there is only one fundamental force in our universe. As usual, let's start by looking at what we know. The electromagnetic force is the force that exists between charged particles and keeps electrons in their orbits. Gravitational force is the force that exists between masses and is responsible for the formation of solar systems, clusters and the cosmos at large. The strong nuclear force is the force that binds the nucleus of atoms together. And finally, the weak nuclear force is the force that is responsible for radioactive decays such as the transformation of a neutron to a proton and an electron. Now, let us look at the forces one by one and eliminate the redundant ones. Before we move, please, please like the video and subscribe if you are new to my channel. Check out my other videos on quantum mechanics and special relativity to see how I have proven them to be completely wrong. Subscribe to stick around for more. In the last video, we invoked the old idea of the neutron being made up of protons and electrons and used that to develop a model for the nucleus. When a neutron decays, it produces a proton and an electron with the release of energy according to the following equation. In reverse, when an electron is captured by a proton, the result is the formation of a neutron. The equations balance both in terms of charge, mass, and energy, which suggests strong proton-electron hypothesis of the neutron. In the last video, we saw that with this model, when you bring a proton and a neutron together, the proton polarizes the neutron. That is, it attracts the electron in the neutron towards itself, while repelling the neutron's proton away from it, forming a single particle with one electronic charge that appeared to have shifted to the right. We know that for all practical purposes, the nucleus is spherical. So according to what I have demonst demonstrated, if you place the same number of protons and neutrons inside this sphere, the nucleus, which is usually the case with stable atoms, the interaction between pairs of protons and neutrons will form a system of positive charges with their charges shifted radially outwards. The end result is a single sphere with all the positive charges settled on the surface and this is the nucleus. That is how a Faraday's cage works. So, there is no need for a strong nuclear force. So we are one force down from the four fundamental forces. The only theory that can be used to argue this model is quantum mechanics. And I have proven several times that quantum mechanics is wrong. Check the videos on the playlist Quantum Gravity and Waves and Particles to see the various proofs I gave. Find in the video description below the link to part 1 of this video and links to the other playlist that prove quantum mechanics wrong. I recommend you check it out because I also showed therein how gravitation and electromagnetism are related, which is something we will use later in this video. The weak force is the force that exists in the neutron, the particle responsible for radioactivity. 
I do not entertain the idea of quarks, which allow radioactivity in protons simply because quarks are constructs of quantum mechanics, which is wrong. This leaves only neutrons as the particles that are responsible for radioactivity. This is typically the transformation of a neutron into a proton and an electron, which are held inside the neutron by electromagnetism. So, the weak nuclear force is the electromagnetic force between the neutron's proton and electron. So now we are two forces down. Now we are left with just two of the fundamental forces, which are the electromagnetic and the gravitational force. This is where I take you back to the playlist I told you about earlier. If you have been following this channel, you can be able to predict from this point how I will conclude a one fundamental force for the universe. We saw that all the equations that you can write for charge can be written for mass, and they take the same forms. For example, the equation of the electrostatic force between two charges is kqq over r squared, and the force equation for masses is gmm over r squared. In terms of fields, the equations have the following forms. In the video titled, What if atoms are quantized like solar systems? You will see the momentum quantization equations as follows, and the energy quantization equations as follows. You will have to watch the video to understand exactly what I am saying. And that is when you will understand where the g that takes the place of the Planck's constant came from. I use the word quantization, but it does not in any way suggest that quantum mechanics is correct. I derived all those expressions classically. We have the De Broglie equation as follows. The Planck quantization equations as follows. Furthermore, the Schrodinger equations are like so. The Dirac equation and the Heisenberg uncertainty relations like so. From the Schrodinger equation to the Heisenberg equation, I used a real wave function instead of a complex one, which still allowed the equations to take the same form. These forms do not produce contradictions like in traditional quantum mechanics. So you see, there is no equation for mass that cannot be written in terms of charge. Go to my other video titled Einstein's Field Equation for Charge and you will see how the mass equation for space-time can also be written in terms of charge. So, using the word mass and charge separately is redundant. If you chose to work with mass, you will have all the equations you need to describe the universe. Likewise, if you chose to work with charge. So, you find out, solar systems are just big atoms. Let's look at just a few obvious similar similarities aside from the equations. First, from my model of the nucleus, we saw that the nucleus is just a single ball with a net charge at the center of an atom. Likewise, a star is a single ball with mass at the center of a solar system. The ratio of the mass of the smallest star to the mass of a planet is of the same order of magnitude as the ratio of the mass of the hydrogen nucleus to the mass of the electron. Radioactivity in atoms is supernova explosions in solar systems as both include the death of the central object and the formation of new ones. Bonding forms compounds for atoms and forms clusters for solar systems. Gravitational and electromagnetic waves, and so on. 
I can go on and on, but let me leave it here. So now we can conclude that gravitation and electromagnetism are equivalent, and it is redundant to use both in the description of our universe. Therefore, there is only one fundamental force in the universe, which is gravitation or electromagnetism, not both. I would like to hear your thoughts about this. Drop it down in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video. See you next time on the Classical Universe.